Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's your boy, Michael. I am here again for another video. Along my faith-based series. Um, so, I want to welcome all my first-time viewers. And... I want to welcome back those that have viewed my videos before. Sorry. <laughs> um, before we get started, I would like you to know that none of my videos are scripted. None of them are edited because, frankly, I don't know how to edit. Sorry, my computer. <clears throat> so my videos are not edited. Uh, they are raw and uncut. Any mistakes that um, happen to be made while making the video, you're getting to see them firsthand. So with that being out of the way, uh, like I said, welcome everybody to the video. Uh, all my first time viewers, welcome. And uh, any subscribers that I have, welcome back. I hope you enjoy uh, my videos. Um, this channel has gone through a revamp um, where it was focused mainly on um, uh, political ideas and social commentary. It's now going to be centered uh, solely around um, faith-based topics and hopefully bring some people closer to Christ or to actually bring people to Christ. So, in my last video, we were discussing faith, uh, the true face of faith, and we uh, covered the parable of the sower, and we covered the story of the sinful woman who washed Jesus' feet with her tears, which are all very good um, acts of faith. Um, well, I'll take that back. The, um, the story of the sinful woman is, an act, is a great story of an act of faith because just her faith alone was enough to free her from her sin. The parable of the sower shows what kind of people do with their faith, whether you're the, uh, the path, the, the rocks, the thorns, or the good soil. Uh, faith does come in many, uh, in many forms and has many different levels of, of power. Uh, even as Jesus said, you know, if you, have fa if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could tell the mountain to move and the mountain will move. which is a powerful message to show that just that small amount of real faith can move mountains, um, which it has done in my life um, in a very short amount of time, to be quite honest, uh, in the span of a year <clears throat> um, or just over a year. My life's taken quite a, a turn, whereas... A uh, little over a year ago, I was going through a divorce. I was basically homeless. Uh, the only possessions I had were what were on my truck. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a truck driver. Um, I I was forced with I was you know facing the prospect of uh, being alone because, you know, my work schedule really doesn't allow a lot of time for dating um, or, you know, really any, any possessions. And I was really, really depressed uh, in a bad spot. And I met, well, I not met, I reacquainted with an ex that I had many years ago. We reconnected. We fell in love, and again, 
and we decided that, you know, we were going to be together, and uh, she came out with me on the truck, and, you know, rode with me as a passenger. She really enjoyed herself, <clears throat> and um, that wasn't good enough. You know, we both wanted a home. And, you know, we had uh, been talking about, you know, about religion and the Bible and, and Christ. And she actually found a, um, found a home for sale online. And we called about it, spoke with the lady. She was really nice. And we told her we would like to purchase it. We got a great deal on it. And, um, and we really lucked out. We didn't have to go through a bank. It was, you know, just pay her money and the house is ours. Uh, and originally she wanted, um, $25,000 for it. And then after speaking with her, she said she'd knock it down to 23,000, I believe. And then, um, when we met, she knocked it down to 20. 20,000. And she said, a thousand dollars down, a thousand dollars a month. And we were really blessed, uh, with that. And then I switched companies, um, and hired on with the company that I'm currently with and everything has just been going uphill. So we moved into our home and, uh, and she wanted to go to church. Okay, no big deal. We'll go to church. Well, at the time, I was with the company that got me home every weekend. And every week, we started going to church. We started, you know, reading our Bibles, uh, you know, praying before meals, praying daily, reading the Word. And our, our life our life increased. Um, we were, we were able to, uh, purchase a car. Um, we, we have been able to make our bills, uh, every month. We go to church. Um, you know, when I'm home, you know, we do Bible study together and through our faith, knowing that God is going to take care of us, um, everything has gotten better and it's, it's made me so happy. <laughs> I mean, I know you can't tell, but, but I am very happy with my life right now. Um, so anyway, this is a faith-based, uh, channel. Um, if you are not a believer, uh, that is fine. That is, that is your decision. But if you're watching this video, then something inside you is possibly longing for more. And I would like to give you that through uh, my preaching. Uh, no, I am not an ordained preacher or a minister or a priest, pastor, or anything like that. Um, coincidentally, neither were the disciples. Neither were Jesus' disciples when he sent them out as sheep amidst the wolves. Uh, they were not ordained, but they were given the power of the Holy Spirit to, uh, to exercise demons, to spread the word, and with authority of God. Uh, and I believe that that's what I've been given. I've been given the authority from God to preach to you. Now, if, like I said, if you're not a believer, more power to you. I mean, everybody has their own belief system, what they believe in, and that's perfectly fine. But if you are watching this, then maybe you're longing for something a little bit more than what you have now. And I kindly ask you to sit through the entire video and just hear the Word of God. Now, I do like to start my... Um, my videos with my favorite Bible verse, which is Joshua 1 9. And it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? 
Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's very powerful to me uh, because there have been times when I've not been strong or courageous. I've been, I've been weak, weak-minded and weak-willed. But this tells me to be strong and courageous because God is going to be with me. I'm never going to be alone. God's going to take up the fight for me. Okay. So, um, without any further ado, <laughs> I love saying that. Without any further ado, we are going to dive right into it. Uh, another faith-based video that is going to uh, show us just how powerful uh, true faith can be, okay? And today we're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 3. Uh, for those of you that don't have a Bible that would like to follow along, um, go ahead and pause, uh, exit out of this video, go to the App Store, um, and you can download a Bible app for free, okay? It's completely free. There's nothing you have to purchase. Um, but if you are interested, I would say to go down and pick yourself up a Bible. Uh, I would recommend an NIV, excuse me, an NIV Bible because it is easier to explain. There's not all the these and thous and thys, you know. It is easier to understand. But if you don't feel like going down and purchasing a Bible right now, then yes, download a Bible app. It is free. Trust me. That, that was my first, um, well, one of my first uh, Bibles uh, or ability to, ability to read the Bible. I have owned Bibles before, but they were just too hard to understand. Okay. So in Daniel chapter 3, there's a character named King Nebuchadnezzar. It's a very long name, but yes, it's pronounced Nebuchadnezzar. Um, apparently, King Nebuchadnezzar had built a statue that was uh, 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. Now, for modern translation, that is going to be about 90 feet high and 9 feet wide, or 27 meters high and 2.7 meters wide, okay? Okay. Um, he built it up on a plain in, a land, in the land of Dura in the province of Babylon, okay? Now, he called everybody together, his prefects, his governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, all the provincial officials in the area um, for the dedication of this uh, statue, which uh, was going to be his god, Okay? So, um, the herald, the announcer, I guess you might call him, um, um, announced that all the nations and people of every land, now this is coming, this is actually a verse four in chapter three. Then the herald proudly proclaimed nations and peoples of every language. Um, uh, that is what you are commanded to do. Let's see. Um, as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the gold, the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Uh, whosoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So basically, King Nebuchadnezzar commanded that this statue was his, was God, was, you know, his God. The, the, the God of the land, and that everybody, every nation, every language was supposed to gather around it, kneel down and worship this this God, this false God. Otherwise, they were going to be thrown into a, into a furnace and basically burned to death. Okay, so um, as soon as all the music sounded, Everybody, all the nations and people of every language fell down and worshipped this image of gold that the king set up. Um, let's see. Now, the Bible says in verse 8, At this time, some astrologers, uh, some astrologers came forward and announced to the Jews, uh, they said, or a uh, came forward and denounced the Jews. I'm sorry, they denounced the Jews and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, 
May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of all this music uh, must fall down and worship the image of gold. And whoever does not fall down and worship is going to be thrown into the furnace. But there were some Jews that, um, let's see, but there are some Jews whom you have set the affairs, set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. It was three men. Okay, their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this astrologer is saying that they're not paying you any attention. They don't care what you say. Uh, that he says that they neither they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you set up. Now this upset the king, and the Bible actually says that uh, he was furious with rage. So he summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, to him. Uh, and they were brought forth to the king. And the king, and he said to him, "You know, is it true uh, that you do not serve my gods nor worship the image of gold I set up?" Uh, and he gives him another chance. He says, "Now, when you hear the music, uh, if you fall down on your knees and worship this image that I made, great. But if you don't worship it, I'm going to throw you into the fire." And he says then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand, claiming to be all-powerful. You know, that no God anywhere can rescue these three people from, from death. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to him, You know, King, uh, we don't need to defend ourselves, you know, before you. We don't, we, don't, we, have, we don't have to defend ourselves. They say that if we're thrown into the furnace... The God we serve is able to deliver us from it. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, they're saying that our God is able to deliver us from the furnace and from your hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. So they're basically saying that no matter what you do, we're not going to serve this, you know, serve your gods or worship this image because that is not what we believe. We worship our God and we are willing to give our life up for our God. And even if he doesn't, you know, if you throw us in that fire, he's going to save us. But if he doesn't, we're still willing to die for our God. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was furious. Uh, he took these three men, and his attitude changed toward him because apparently these guys were like leaders of of the city, you know. And his opinion of them changed drastically when they said this. He was ticked, okay, to say the least. He was furious. So he ordered that this furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. And then he commanded some of his strongest soldiers in his army to tie them up, to bind them, to bind their hands so they couldn't escape, escape and throw them into the fire. Uh, so these guys wearing their clothes, their, their pants, their robes, their turbans, um, everything. They were thrown into this furnace that was heated <coughs> seven times hotter than normal. And all right, it was so hot that it actually killed the soldiers that were throwing them in the fire. Okay. Um, so a few minutes passes by and the king, he jumped up. He's like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So he asked his advisors, he's like, hey, um, didn't we throw three guys into this fire? We tied them up and threw them in there, right? And his advisors, well, yes, your majesty, we did. Well, he said, now, take a look at this. Uh, I see four men walking around in this fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth man, the fourth person looks like the son of the son of man. Now, the king approached the opening of this furnace because he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Four men 
walking around the fire, not a care in the world. And the fourth looks like the Son of Man. And the king said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So these three men in the fire came walking out. And all of the advisors and all the, the, the prefects and governors and everybody, um, you know, came around to see what was going on. Um, and they saw that the fire had not even touched them. There was not even the smell of smoke on their robes. Not a hair on their head or body was singed. But the ropes were burned off. The king amazed, and he said, praise, and I'm reading this, this is verse 28 in chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any gods except their own. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other gods can save in this way. And then, not only did he let them go, but he promoted them. He promoted them. This is an act of faith blind faith in God. <clears throat> Not knowing 100% if God would deliver uh, these three men, you know, they they said, oh well, we're not going to worship your God. It's not going to happen. And and God freed them, you know. That is one of the biggest displays of faith that I've found so far in the Bible. You know, will, the willingness to um, to give up your life for God. They didn't know whether God was going to save them or not. They didn't care because they knew that that God was going to reward them either way. Um, I, I'm not sure how to I'm not sure how to put it because it is it is so it, it's just so powerful that that they were willing to face death not knowing if God was going to save them or not. God could have easily said, "Well, I'm not going to save you. You're going to become martyrs for me." But God looked down and he saw that they had such great faith in him that God said, I am going to send the Son of Man, which is Jesus, down to uh, down to them and pull them out of this fire. It's just a great display of faith. Another display of faith, which I was looking for, but I couldn't find it, uh, which is another reason for the pauses in the video. Um, after Jesus had prayed... Uh, he asked his disciples, who do the people say that I am? And they, you know, the disciples say, well, some say that you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. And Jesus asked, who do you say I am? And Peter just stepped forward and said, you're God's Messiah. You're the Christ. And Jesus said, tell no man of this. Peter took that great leap of faith and declared him the Messiah. 
Faith can be such a strong and powerful weapon against the devil. The devil is everywhere these days. Okay? He's everywhere. He's in the media. He's on TV. He's in music. He's in movies. Um, And the biggest weapon that the devil has right now is the internet and technology. iPads, smartphones, smart TVs. The devil controls the media. He controls the internet. He controls everything. But that doesn't mean that we can't take a stand against him. I am using the devil's weapon against him by putting out these videos of faith and encouraging everybody to read the Bible and to study God's word and to come to God. All right? Because, you know, you can call me a hypocrite, but I was the biggest skeptic. I was the biggest person that was trying to disprove the Bible. But then, after taking it on faith alone, I acquired a serenity and a peace that I can't describe. And, you know, people might make fun of me. Ah, ha, ha, look at him. He's a Jesus freak. Yeah, but even Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted and reviled for my name's sake, for your is the kingdom of heaven. My reward is going to be in heaven. It's not going to be here on earth. It's going to be in heaven. So I'm willing to take my chances. Now, if if anybody that is not a believer has made it this far through the video, I congratulate you. I thank you. Great. Uh, you've listened to me rant on. But faith... Um, bottom line is faith can be a very, very powerful thing. It can save you in the most desperate times. I know. If you haven't come to the Lord, I challenge you, download a Bible app, you know, and if you're feeling like you have questions about something, then absolutely go to Google and Google it, okay? Uh, You can Google the question and it will come up and it will show you a, you know, Bible passage uh, and read that Bible passage and, 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 and meditate on it. You know, think about it. Think about the meaning and how it applies to you because this right here has given me so many Um, instances that apply directly to me. But I do charge, I do challenge you to, to read the Bible, to pray. If you don't know how to pray, guess what? There is no set formula. You just have to talk to God. I do it all the time. I don't have to sit there and say certain prayers, you know, I just talk to him like he's a friend, like I would talk to my best friend, just talk to him, God will listen, God does answer your prayers, even if that answer is no, but if he answers with no, there's a reason, so... Like I said, I challenge you, download a Bible app, um, the NIV, you know, it gives you the option of which version you want, the NIV, because it's easier to understand. Uh, If you want more, go down and buy a Bible. They're not much. You can get them from Walmart for like 20 bucks. Um, If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'll read every comment I get. And if you have a question, ask it, and I will touch base on it in the next video. Um, if you have a prayer request, put it in the video, in the comments. I will read it, and I will say a prayer for you. I will say a prayer for you. I will have my wife say a prayer for you. I will have my church 
that I attend, I will have them say a prayer for you. Okay? If you just need to say hi, say hello. I welcome all comments, whether positive or negative, because at least I know that you saw the video. Okay? Um, if you wish to send me a friend request on here, I don't know how to do it. Um, please do. All right? If you would like to know um, an easier way to get in touch with me, um, I do have Twitter and um, usually I'm on there most of the time. Um, I have email. I'm more than willing to give you that in a private message. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what, um, what other topics you would like me to cover um, that are faith-based. Um, or if you want a backstory about my journey to coming to Christ, I will more, be more than happy to tell you that story. Um, but give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If not, give it a thumbs down. It is your choice, but at least I know that you got the Word of God today. Share this video with your friends on social media, whatever you want to do. And hit that subscribe button. Mash that bell icon. That way, whenever I upload a new video, you're going to get notified about it. And you can experience the Word of God and feel the joy that I feel every time I read it. Okay? Um, and if you're wondering how you can come to Christ, leave it in the comments. I will be more than happy to uh, walk you through it. It's not that hard. But I thank everybody for joining me this far. I know this video is a little bit gone on a little bit, but they're all going to go on about this long. So I hope everybody has a blessed day. I'll, I'm praying for each and every one of you. And like I said, hit the subscribe button and mash that bell icon. It would really help me out. None of my videos are monetized. I do them all for free. Okay. Um, I just want to bring the word of God to you. So I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.